Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Homeowner Series. I am your host, the Rental Man Buck. On today's glorious episode, we have buying and fixing a rusted up old cabin. While it might not look like much, we sure as heck got a lot of work ahead of us. I am going to need to start by running over to my friend Daryl's house so we can get on the road with all the supplies that we need and we will be ready to lock and load. Let's make our way down to the truck and we'll see you guys in just a bit. Well, I hope you guys are having a fantastic morning so far. It is a relatively chilly February morning. It was a lot warmer yesterday. It just kind of like dropped in temperature. I need to get the 6-7 fired up and we are going to be heading over to my buddy Daryl since he's going to be helping me out with this project. Over the last couple weeks, I've been looking on some land auction sites to see whether or not there's any cabins in the area or at least somewhat close that I could be buying and possibly renovating. I always wanted to have kind of like a, a summer cabin or even a winter cabin if we wanted to go up there during the winter time. But a lot of them are either millions and millions of dollars or they are so broken that they pretty much just need to be bulldozed. I actually ended up finding a relatively decent condition one, but it looks like it's going to need quite a bit of work just property wise, like maintenance reasons. And then we should be able to be fine. Daryl's going to bring his own trailer with, I believe, his four-wheeler and his utility tractor he's got out at his uh, acreage shed. But I just wanted to check in with him first, since he's going to be coming with me. Morning, Stacy. Hey, is Daryl ready to go, or is he just not on his phone yet? He'll be out in a couple minutes? All right, thank you. Thanks, Stacy. I'll tell you what, Daryl's a lucky man to find a woman like that, except she's kind of got an expensive taste. Holy cow, it's about time. Hey, Slowpoke. Meet me down at Home Depot, all right? I'm gonna, I have to go grab a couple extra things. If not, then just grab your stuff on the trailer and uh, we'll start getting on our way. Sounds good, bud. If you guys enjoy content like this and would absolutely love to see more homeowners, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. As you guys do know, we are on the race to 100,000 public subscribers by the end of this year. TikTok has been absolutely popping off. So if you guys want to check out any of the live streams that we do on TikTok, the stream schedule I'm starting to work out is weekdays from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central Time. We will be live on the TikTok platform and from 10 a.m. roughly to probably 2 p.m. Central Time, we will be live on YouTube on Saturdays. It's a way that I can help get you guys more content and keep things rolling so that way we always have some sort of a content coming out for you guys. Since I'm at the Home Depot, though, I'm going to run in and get my supplies and we will catch you guys back probably when we're a little bit closer to the cabin itself might stop at a gas station or something and we'll catch you there hey daryl did you make sure we grabbed that receipt from sunbelt we did oh there it is yeah, okay thank thank you man. thanks bud so we just picked up the sunbelt rental bobcat i'm getting myself one last quick load of diesel before we head out because i'm probably not going to be able to stop for the rest of the day daryl's going to jump right behind me on the freeway and we will be making our way to the gravel road that we're supposed to take to get up there. I don't know exactly what road we're supposed to take, but I know it's probably going to get a little bit mucky as it was a little bit wetter up in this area than it has been where we're at. Just got to wait for the train first. Everything's still tied down back there, Daryl? Okay, good. I didn't really honk if anything falls off. A lot of you guys ask me what my personal favorite truck is. This truck that I'm currently driving right now it's actually really difficult because I really would want to get an eight foot box version of this truck. I'm really adamant about that, but the crew cab is just starting to grow more and more on me as time goes by. I just don't necessarily want to be driving an absolute land yacht, but the 2011 to 2016 Ford Super Duty is my personal favorite uh, generation of pickup. I know I like, I like the OBSs, I like the brick noses, I like the other ones. This should be my turn though. But I really just love the looks of these 6.7s. It's the last of the steel body Fords, and it really just gets that. It's built rugged, but it also has like newer amenities. I don't think I'd get the touchscreen in it though. But let me know down in the comments, guys. You guys hit the comment section. What would be your preferred truck? Is it something that's newer? Is it something that's older? Modify it with a lift kit, tires, kind of like how Austin's doing it, but maybe not SEMA build. Just feel free to let me know down below. These roads look pretty dry. It's not like it's dusty, but I would not want to be driving down this road when it is wet out because we would just be dragging these trailers like anchors through the mud. Well, we're just now rolling in though. And I gotta kind of find out how to drive up this driveway because it's been so grown over with vegetation. I kind of can't see where I'm going. But there is our cabin. 
This property was purchased for a little under $200,000 between the land and the building itself. I don't really know what all is on this property, but I do know that it's going to need some restoration help. Daryl, the points to not get stuck on this on the fence post. But Daryl now parked up. Let's just see what he ended up bringing. So he brought his little four tracks, 300, in case we need to haul some branches out. And then back on the trailer, he has his 3046R with the undermounted deck that we can use to cut just some of this grass down and probably mulch it. I'm not going to be bagging any of this. I don't know what I'm going to do with these old vehicles, though. These are more just scrap yards. Like I, you, there's no real fixing any of this. Yes, you could probably sell it off to somebody. Somebody would want to restore it, but I'm definitely not going to be doing that. A few more junk cars down on that far side. I did not really know because this was an online auction. I didn't really come out here and look at this, but I didn't know that there was a garage. Do we have abilities to see in? Oh, it looks like we got a Jeep, possibly a Massey Ferguson. I think that's a Massey Ferguson at least. Can I stand up here and look in a little bit more? Yes, we got a Massey Ferguson 133. Used to be an old Jeep, maybe a little mini bike. Some shelves. I guess I can see if I can get in. That might be a that might be a first. Grab a pry bar out of the toolbox. So we can jam it in the side of the door and almost pop it free. Because I don't think this thing's gonna roll up. Hey Daryl, can you grab that 2x4 that was sitting in that shed over there and just kinda help me pry this thing up? I'm gonna try and pop it loose, and then if you can help me lift it, that'd be great. Okay, doors up a little bit. Put the deep put the board under there. Come on. Alright, three, two, one. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, this is. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say this is a money, a money opening, but yeah, we got a little Massey Ferguson in this in this shed, an old Jeep. I don't think any of this stuff runs. If it did, it probably doesn't. It's been sitting for how many years? Little mini bike, a welder, and then a, a nice well, a nice table. So that'd be cool inside the shop if we can get some stuff working. Yeah, this, this garage has definitely seen better days, though. Definitely has seen better days. I might end up just tearing this spot down as well. I don't... I don't really see a use for having this garage. This is just... It, the structurally, it's not very sound. It doesn't look like... Throw out all this garbage. Let's take a look inside the cabin. I want to see what the inside of this place looks like. How much work do we have there? We got all this garbage and wood scraps. There's even a mattress. There's a mattress out here. Okay, yeah, this place is a dump. Got trash everywhere. You got a stovetop tipped over. There's just... Oh, well, I guess, well, the main living area is not bad. Loft's at least relatively clean. How's the bathroom? <coughs> okay, plumbing's a little bit bad in that. We will take care of that problem a little bit later. That appears to really be it. I mean, there's not a... Not a whole lot else that we can really do around here besides start cleaning up the ground. I mean, we've got a bunch of stumps that are sticking up out of the ground, so I have to take care of that. If I look at my map, this is what my property line has said to be. So this chunk, I get the lake all the way down to this corner, up to this quadrant, and then I think there's a road there if I go back to my regular map. No, but like halfway between this tree line, that's where my property line splits, and then that stuff belongs to this guy. So there's nice access to a freshwater creek. That'll be really fun. If it actually gets high enough on there, it could almost do some uh, kayaking down that, all the way, go all the way down the hill. That would be really cool. Had a half decent stack of firewood still mounted up. You know, this, I'm honestly not thinking this was that bad of a buy. Just kind of get some relatively good cleanup work going through and call it a day. See what else we can do. So let's get in the forestry vulture and let's start cleaning up the property just a little bit. If you guys have not checked out the Lizard Forestry Mulcher that can be found in the Giants Mod Hub, I highly recommend you guys look at this thing for the Skid Steer as it is my favorite mod for just clearing land, getting things all spiffed up. You couldn't make this job any easier. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult because you really have to play with the bucket sometimes. But it just gets the it just gets the job done so cleanly, it gets it done really fast. And if you have a heavier skid steer, it doesn't tip like this. I should have gotten a bigger skid steer, but they didn't really have anything. So let's move our way over to some of these bigger shrub lines and start maybe cleaning out a little bit more of a driveway path. Let's drop the mulcher and start clearing out some trees. It just eats away at this stuff. It literally just chomps at it. This is definitely one of those mods, though. I like do not start a save game without it. 
I'll definitely have to move my truck in just a little bit, but I'm gonna kind of clear out a little bit of an area first. And then we're gonna start loading up all of these trash and garbage and stuff. Get ourselves some gloves on because we don't know really what's in there, how long it's been sitting. We'll start throwing that on Daryl's trailer since he says he's just gonna take it off and wash it once we're done anyway. Then we can put my truck right here and start working out a driveway towards this spot. And I think lastly, we'll start working on cleaning out the inside of the cabin. I believe we got enough out of the way, so let's move my Ford over to the dirt spot, and then we can start working on our driveway portion. I'm a feeling like a small fish in a big pond. I think I go back where I came from. Where everybody knows my name. My friends are still the same. I guess the slow life hit me just right, like a bonfire on a cold night. Hell, and you can keep your nine to five. I'd say that's good enough to start out with. What I'm probably gonna do, let's at least put it on the dirt part so I know it's out of the way. We'll leave that running, but let's get the John Deere off the back of Daryl's trailer. And Daryl might fart around a little bit on the four-wheeler and start picking up sticks. We'll have to get the trailer off the truck though before we do that. These drive over decks though, they save so much time and Deer's like quick hitch system that they applied to these things, it makes it so much easier to just get in, lock it down quick and then get right on and start mowing. Mower is on and we'll start cleaning some of this up. It is gonna take it down, I'm basically gonna scalp it, but at least it gets it down all the way to the bottom. And if we hit some of these bigger, larger tree roots or stumps that are sticking out of the ground, uh, it's, I hate to say to be the bearer of bad news, but I will be the one to replace stuff. I'm gonna start with the driveway first. That way we at least kind of know where we're driving. And plus the, it's gonna be probably less chance that we'll hit something bigger or where I can at least see dirt underneath of it. Gonna have to give a huge shout out though today to our major supporters of the video. That being Prairie State Tractor, the local dealer that supplied Daryl with this fantastic 3046R and Andy Clean, the world's greatest farm soap. If you guys wanna use that to clean your trucks, your tractors, or any of your personalized ag equipment, be sure to check out Andy. You can find his link to the Andy Clean merchandise website. Pick yourself up some wonderful Andy Clean gear, but also check out your local John Deere dealer and pick up some Andy Clean today. The good news is I can see my driveway again. The bad news is we still have a lot more work to do. Definitely going to be keeping the roll bar up on this thing, though. I do not want to experience a rollover in this kind of ground, because who knows, like I said, what's laying in the dirt. Bambi is in the yard. I repeat, Bambi is in the yard. Let's start kind of cleaning up around the rest of the yard itself. And maybe we might do a little bit of reseeding at the beginning of this year. It, I really will kind of depend on how this turns out. If we have to scalp the whole thing down to the bottom, then I might just leave some of the grass towards the back half and then we'll just kind of like sprinkle some blue Kentucky blue grass or something on the front yard. It is cleaned up relatively well though. I haven't hit any major defects like any big rocks in the ground. This mower also doesn't really bog down that much. That's a big reason why I wanted to bring this big boy out was eh, let's at least have something that's not going to bog out. If we were to bring out my little roper lawnmower, we'd be out here till next Thursday because the deck would keep clogging. While spinning around in circles, I'm kind of trying to figure out what I want to do. That shed is, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna take that shed down. But if I take that shed down, that means I'm gonna have to clear enough of this area out to be able to haul in dirt and possibly build another new shed. Well, that's not the cheapest choice on planet Earth. It still is probably the most practical if I were to have any of my stuff be stored out here. Oh yeah, this is all gonna be just covered in, yep, I can hear it, they're, they're chopping up under the deck. Just get out, get out. But I'll have to chop down this. I think that's a dogwood tree. Probably gonna have to take out these two trees since these two are dead. I don't really want that falling on the cabin. This oak tree, I might actually just trim it up. I might take out some of these bottom branches. But let's kind of clean up around the GMC and hopefully we'll be able to just take the skid steer and we'll push that, push that and the old Chevy back into the uh, one shed until I kind of decide what to do with it slash I can call somebody out to come and get them. I think that's pretty much going to do it. We we basically scalped the front yard, but there was really nothing underneath of that anyway. This was all just dead, overgrown grass. We need to break up the root system itself so that way there's something that it actually has to fall on. 
unlike these trees this this pine i think it's probably suffering from a little bit of uh disease as the top of it looks fine but the bottom i have hey i just don't want to see this thing fall on the cabin so we're going to definitely be cutting down that tree that tree that tree and really any of these dead ones that we see in the area this oak tree i'm probably going to just jump up and maybe trim off some of the other branches so not we're not going to be able to do anything with that but i'd chop off like this branch maybe that branch and then this little guy and then leave the top half of it because it's not bugging anything we are going to move this over to the side get the mulcher part of our attachment taken off and very very delicately because if we're careful with this we're going to be able to make this happen I'm gonna push this GMC back into that awning. I just wanna see how difficult this would be to push this. Okay, we're on. Oh, I don't think that's moving. Nope, we are gonna have to lift that thing up. It is locked on all four wheels. I am going to run to town quick, load this thing back up, go get myself a pair of pallet forks. I'll just buy them because eventually at some point I probably plan on buying a skid steer of maybe this size or Daryl and I'll like share it or something since he has that acreage out in the outside of town but we're gonna go grab ourselves some pallet forks quick and we will be right back so that way we can start moving some of this stuff out of the way it took a little bit longer than i wanted to to go and get those but we finally got that situation figured out let's make our way back up the driveway which we can at least now see i will probably end up graveling this or well it really just kind of depends i will be taking that tree out though and probably taking that one as well now that we got our pallet forks though Let's get that GMC out of the dirt and under that cover. Hopefully somebody will buy that piece of scrap iron. Oh yeah, now we're cooking with gas. Now we're cooking with gas. I think it's very sensitive hydraulics. That's one thing I'm not a huge fan about with this Bobcat, but that means it's good. It means we have enough, we have a lot of hydraulic pressure. Oh, she is a stubborn bugger. I know you don't want to move, but we got to get you out of here and good so there is one vehicle out of the way let's just see how big of a pain in the neck this thing is going to be i'm genuinely curious if mother nature has taken its course enough on this i can just pick it up and possibly lift it out i highly doubt it but hey we can always try can't we oh nope i don't think i don't think mother nature's taken enough of her course okay we'll do it the same way we did the other one I honestly think this is going to be probably like a two or possibly even three part series depending on how far we really want to go with this now that we got that up in the air let's just see how easy it is going to be to push this thing back oh she's even more locked in than the old gmc was yeah let me know down in the comments guys would you guys like to see this almost be like a two or three part video where we're trying to get this summer house ready to go for the summer season i really would like to try and do something with that i think that'd be a really cool idea but it is. It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of time to get this place ready for summer season, especially if we're going to make this a, a summer cabin getaway. This ain't really a getaway. This is more of a, a get me away from it. But the Chevy now out of the way, though, that opens up the ability to start maybe getting some of this stuff out of the house. We got a little bit more of an open spot to work with, and I think I might start trimming some of these trees off. We'll kick our forks in so we have more of a standing platform to put ourselves on. There we go. Let's start chopping these branches. Beautiful. We'll make our way back around and we'll get that one more that's on the side. There we go. Let's get you on the trailer and then we can just set these in a burn pile pit and hopefully get them out of here without any trouble at all. I'm going to get everything else moved out of the way and we're going to start chopping like this tree down, that tree down. We're just going to get our area obviously cleared out so that way we don't have to worry about hitting anything. And then we'll put our brush brush mulcher back on and start clearing out the stumps around here and our projected way we want the tree to fall so we need it to rotate this way timber maybe yes maybe Do I, will this work no dang it let's give it just a little bit of encouragement sometimes you need a little bit of tlc there it goes there it goes. Beautiful. Chop this thing up into sections, and we'll be set to go. After just pushing those off to the side, I can already see a difference. Look at that, how much more open it is. 
Let's get Vatry, Vatry, and the uh, those three, those three right there. Let's get those taken care of quick, and we'll kind of see where we're at. This one I will have to be very careful with though, because I only really get one shot with this. Okay, please fall correctly. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, it it kind of worked. Watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. Okay, kind of it kind of worked. If I climb up on the trunk quick, I can kind of clean out some of the bigger, extra ones that are sitting on the side. Let's cut this last tree and get ourselves out of here. Oh, watch it. Watch it. Yes. It's it's satisfying to watch the trees fall. I don't really care to do the lumber work in farm sim itself, but doing stuff like this where it's just common tree work where you're getting some stuff out, like dead trees or you're trimming trees, I really do like that. That's kind of a fun little feature that you can somewhat play out in farm sim. And with the last log on the pile, look at how much more open that is. That is awesome. We have, uh, let's see, one, two, three more dead trees, four if we count that one. But since we're going to be taking down this garage anyway, I don't really see a huge reason in taking it down yet. Uh, I think our next step really is to just kind of start taking out some of this junk. So we're going to try and haul out as much garbage as we can quick. And then our next step for this property itself is getting the cars hauled out, as well as cleaning up the rest of the yard by, just, by getting rid of all of the stumps and then kind of starting to... Uh, demolition wise get that building taken down if we have those cars taken out we'll take that shed down and then we'll start reworking the outside structure of this building getting the shingles looked at getting all of our outside wood inspected to make sure there's no like termites that got in on this because this is genuine knock on wood and we don't want to have this thing be structurally in sound so daryl and i are going to get to work with hauling out some garbage and we will see you guys back when we have some of this stuff at least cleaned out a few moments later Make sure that is tight. Give it one quick tap. That's not going anywhere. And here's what we got. So we got all the canoes, the wood scraps, the what it was a recliner sitting here. We got the mattress out. There was a little beach chair that was all torn to bajillions. All of the garbage on the left side of the cabin. The only thing on the inside, of course, besides the plumbing, we couldn't get the stove out. Because we still got to figure out how to... I mean, that's a heavy stove. That's at least a three-, per, three four person operation to get that thing moving. But we got a couple more boxes of stuff we're going to kind of throw out. And then we got to start working on looking at the electrical systems inside of the cabin. Making sure that is all structurally sound. Make sure the insulation looks good. And then, of course, fix our, our plumbing problem. We, we did try running a air freshener in here. But I think the septic tank is full and it's backed up. So we really have to look into how the plumbing system is in this building... But other than that, I think that's pretty much good for right now on part one. I'm going to get a quick aerial drone shot, and we'll see what this thing looks like and how far we've, had, we've actually come on this property so far. Popping up in the drone now, I kind of have to be a little bit careful because the trees around me, some of them are not sensing on the drone. But I really am starting to like the layout of this place, especially now that we can actually see things. Maybe we could even possibly restore that Massey Ferguson since it's got some old uh, turf tires on it. Either way, that is going to do it for our part one of the Summer Cabin Restoration Project. If you guys want to see more videos about this Summer Cabin, be sure to let me know by smashing that like button and hitting the comments down below. What do we do at this place, guys? Do we turn it into something where we build out a bigger shop on the side and it becomes our summer getaway home as well as a summer getaway workshop? Or do we keep it kind of old fashioned and do just a small little shed and keep the cabin all nice and slightly outdated, just kind of modernize it a little bit? I kind of uh, am torn between the two, so you guys let me know down below. But that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thank you all so much for checking this one out. Be sure to check out the rest of the Boomstick Club for all the up-to-date content from me and the gang. You already know who is in it. I shall see you all in the next one. This is the Rental Man, out. Peace.